Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to implement some game states so that the game's going to know when it's running or when it's displaying a tap screen to start message or when it's been lost and I'm going to go into my game.java here and let's give it a private enum and I'll call this state and let's say that the various possible states are paused and pause means that it displays the tap screen to start message and I'll have one in which case it's going to say you won or something like that and lost in which case it'll say you lost and let's also of course have running in which case the game will actually actually be being played and we could do something fancier here, like um, if the game's won, you could count up a certain number of milliseconds and then after a short pause, you could put it back into running or put it into pause or whatever you like. But I'll just do something really simple here. And I'll declare a variable of that type. So I'll say private state, state with a lowercase s, and I'll set that initially equal to state.paused. And now in draw, I'm going to say here, I'm going to say, um, well, well, we'll lock the canvas in draw. And then I'll say switch state. So I'll switch on the state. And I'll say, in fact, the quick way of doing this is if I just click this warning here, I can say, add missing case, case statements and it will implement all that for me and with a switch statement you don't need to specify the enum type it kind of automatically knows it and let's say that uh, if the game is paused we're going to say draw text tap screen to start if it's lost we're going to say you lost And unhappy face and if it's if the game has been won if the player won the game we'll say you won exclamation mark and if the game is running let's say draw game we've got this method draw game so I'll say draw game and pass it the canvas and uh, for the default um, could just we just could just get rid of that really because um, if I save it it's not going to give us a warning because those are the only possibilities as we know so that should do the trick and in update we're going to have to do a few things as well so in the update method here at the moment I'm doing kind of collision detection and updating the ball and the opponent but I only want this to happen if the game's running so let's have a um, actually I'll just do I'll make one quick change which is that draw text should be private and draw game should be private because I only call these methods internally the only the draw method should be public out, out of all the draw methods because that has to be called from outside the class and then update, I'm going to have a similar kind of system. Let's have a private update, private void, update game, um, long elapsed. And update game is going to do all this. So I'll just copy that out of, out of there. I'll cut it from there and paste it into update game. So I've moved the contents of update into update game. And now I can say switch state. And once again, let's put the missing case statements. I'll get rid of the, the default one, which we don't need. And if the game's running, then I say update game elapsed. And otherwise, what do I do? Well, I, I want to say that if in, in either of these cases, if the game has been lost or it's been won or it's uh, paused, I think I'd like to make it so that if the user touches the screen 
then the game will then start running. So let's have a private void update paused, I'll call it, and I'll pass it long elapsed, although uh, actually I, I don't think I need to do that because I'm, I'm not going to do anything really fancy here, although I could. I'm going to do something really simple. And I'll just say, in the case that the game's been lost, let's call update paused. In fact, I, I don't think I, I even need to do this, because what I have in mind is that if the user touches the screen, um, so there's a non-touch event, and the game is in one of these states, then it switches into the running state. But I'm, I'm not going to really have to do anything in update, I don't think. So maybe it's not necessary really to have this switch. Let's, let's just try saying if state equals state dot running. Let's try this. Then in that case, I'll say update game. There we go. Maybe that's simpler. And I'll just get rid of all this. And then so we, we update only does something if the game is running. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. And uh, probably just get rid of that. Actually, we don't we don't need it. Yeah. Okay. So, and then in on touch event, what I'll do is here I need to say if state equals game dot running game uh, e equals state dot running. So if the state is is running, then we're going to say player dot set position. Else, what I want to do is, if, if it's not running, it must be paused. So either it's saying you won or you lost, or tap screen to start. And in either case, if the user touches the screen, I probably want to switch the state to running. So I want to say state equals, whoops, that should be a capital S there. So, state equals state dot running, state dot running. So I switch it into the running state. And now we have we need the code that um, so at, at, at the moment the way this works is it starts off paused and then when it's paused what it draws is it draws tap screen to start and when the user taps the screen it gets an on touch event and we need to return true from there to receive drag event successfully so let's oh no we don't this is I'm thinking of the uh, view touch event, which returns true. Okay, so um, so the, the game starts paused. The player touches the screen, and that then the game receives a touch event, and it goes into the running state, and it draws the game. And we want to then say, okay, what if the game's um, won or lost? We have to detect if it's been won or lost, and switch it into the one state. Or the lost state, and in that state, then it's gonna, we're gonna basically um, say it will be caught by this else clause here, and if the user touches the screen, it'll be set back to running. So the the remaining bit to do is that we have to make sure we have to detect if the game has been lost or won and set it into the state won or lost and then the player will get out of that state by touching the screen which will then set it back to running which I think is is workable so um, let's take a look we've already got the code that detects if the game's lost or won and in there we just have to say state equals state dot lost or if it's won we say state equals state dot won and now I think the game is complete as regards the graphics. We still have sound to do. But let's check, because probably I've forgotten something. And there's no score or anything in this game. And of course, there's an absolute ton of things that you could do to make this game a lot nicer and more interesting. All kinds of things. I mean, the possibilities are literally endless. But I just want to create a simple demo here. So we'll stick with this. Okay, so it says tap screen to start, so I'll tap the screen, and now it's running. And actually, one thing I forgot, probably, was to reinitialize the game. Um, oh, 
the emulator is not keeping up with my phone. And my, it's really annoying. My phone is actually playing. So now you can see it. And I lost, and it says you lost. And now the thing is that if I touch the screen, um, I've still lost because I haven't reinitialized the ball. So one thing I need to do is we know, we know that we've lost because it detects that the left-hand edge of the ball is it's, um, more f it's further left than the right-hand side of the bat, and that's how it knows that it's lost. So in the case that the game is lost or won, we need to make sure that um, we need to make sure that the ball is moved back to the centre. So um, if we look at ball now, what actually puts it in the centre is the init method, um, which is here. So I need to give it some kind of um, put move to centre method or something like that. And um, this, this stuff here is actually, is actually moving it to the center. So let's give it a public void move to center. Or maybe I could call it init position is maybe nicer. And then I could take this positioning stuff out of here and put it in init position. And we'll just call it here. and save that and it all looks okay and then also the bats uh, probably should be moved back to the center and we've got some um, we've got some stuff so we don't need to worry about the x position but the y position is being set here um, in bat.java it's being set to the center of the screen vertically so let's also have a public void init position here for the bat because it would be nice to move it into the starting position again and cut that from there and call init position and then just paste that code that initializes the vertical position into there and now if we go back to game.java we need to make sure that if the um, game is won or lost we initialize, re initialize the positions. Let's give it a private void um, init, init object positions. And then we can just say ball.init position, player.init position, and opponent.init position. And this, this could be used, um, well, we, we don't need to use it, we don't really need to use it in init because we're calling it in the init methods themselves. But we are going to have to call it if the game's won or lost. We want to reinitialize the position. So let's say that, um, or we could, we could make it that before the game starts running, then we initialize the position, but it's probably simpler just to do it here. So if, if we lose the game, we need to reinitialize the positions of everything to avoid it getting into a, a circle of constantly thinking it's won or lost. So we just need to move the objects back to their starting positions after the game is lost or won. And I think, I think we're there, hopefully. Let's take a look at the emulator. Uh, sorry, not the emulator, the screencast. Okay, here we go. And um, I tap the screen to start, and the screencast, yeah, it's catching up, which is good. And I'll bounce the bat, I'll bounce the ball once. And to make this an interesting game, this is going to have to be speeded up, but I'm just going to leave it here for debugging purposes. And let's lose the game deliberately. It says you lost. And then I can touch the screen and it starts again with the ball in the position and so on. And sooner or later, if I wait long enough, the opponent will lose, which we've already seen happening. But that could be quite a while, so I won't, I won't bore you with waiting for it. But um, I think that all works. And so I'll leave it there. And you need to make sure, of course, 
um, stuff like if you go to the home screen of your applic- of your phone and you go back to the game, you resume it, you need to make sure that it seems to behave nicely, which I think it does. Um, it could always use more testing, but it seems okay. And make sure you can like start it from the icon successfully and stuff like that. Okay, so that's it for this time. And in the next tutorial, I think we're probably going to start looking at sound, which we may get through in one tutorial, but I'm not sure. So that's it for this time. And until next time, happy coding.